Okay, so today uh, we're going to talk about exporting data from ArcDB. So the last lecture we talked about how to get the data into ArcDB, and then you can start doing all kind of manipulation, uh, filtering, aggregation, whatever you like. And sometimes after you finish uh, those uh, operations, you want to export the data out, either as a pandas data frame, as a CSV. Or sometimes you might want to export as um, vector data. So what whatever data format they suppose, uh, like I showed you last time, uh, 51 data format. So it's quite a lot. And you can do that uh, just with one line of code. You can export all kind of data from DuckDB. So you will see here on the right, we have a couple different formats here. But these are just a sample one. Uh, like I said, you can use whatever vector data format uh, you like. So the common one, GeoJSON, uh, strap file, and also GeoPackage, also Parquet file. So those are the common one we use. And one thing to keep in mind, uh, user will recommend, if you export the data, you want to, you want to import it into GS, so probably strap file or GeoJSON I recommend it. GeoJSON is great, but it's a plain text file, user is much larger. So if you export a huge amount of data, the file is going to be pretty big. And if you open the file, in GS, uh, the QGS, GS, it's pretty slow because GeoJSON files are plain text, it's not indexed, so it's not very efficient. It's okay for small files, a couple megabytes, but if you will find it's pretty big, like hundreds of megabytes, then usually you want to use a uh, swift file or geo package. Swift file has a limit of up to two gigabytes, geo package is like unlimited. <clears throat> geo package actually is a database, it's a SQLite database. So, and Parquet is where you want to make it accessible to other people, you want to put it on the web, then you might want to use the Parquet file. But Parquet file, ArcGIS can open, QGIS can open. It's more like dedicated for cloud for you to streaming uh, the data. So we talk about some of this data format uh, and uh, also some CSV, JSON, Excel, uh, data frame. Let me go to the notebook here. Okay, so already import the library and again the first step always uh, connect to a database if you want to uh, by default is the memory database you can create one if you want to so here uh, you always need to install the extension uh, specifically for that database and also load the extension so we usually use these two to be sufficient uh, if you're just reading the vector data on your local computer then you don't need the http fs that one is usually for reading files through http or AWS as S3 bucket. And uh, first, we need to download some sample data. So this is, I think I used the one from the from the last time, but I already deleted it. But let me read one this one. So let me go back to uh, the last lecture. I need to. I was cleaning up the, the file this morning, so I already deleted it, but. Uh, let me use div map to download the sample data. So it's from here. Okay. Once it's uh, downloaded, you should have all the files in here. And like I mentioned last time, CSV, JSON, Geo, JSON, also the parquet. So what we want to do here is this parquet file. And what we are doing is that we create a table, name cities, and then we open the parquet file. So uh, keep in mind here, like there are two ways you can do that. If you don't need the vector data, you just want the attribute table, then you don't need to leave it this complicated. So you can just simply come here, con SQL, and then the simple. Oh, by the way, you don't need to download actually, because it's reading from the HTTP URL. So you can just, you can do it like this. Okay. As simple as that. From this, it should work. See? So if you just want to see what the data look like, kind of like the data is in the cloud, uh, just like watching YouTube, like you're just streaming the data. The downside is that this column is not recognized. So if you want to uh, treat it as a polygon, as vector data, then you need to use this kind of a little bit more complicated. So select something from this and then add geometry. So what we're doing here is that we create a table and then basically we get all the columns except this geometry column. We get all the columns and then exclude the geometry 
then you deal with the geometry so these two are separate right select something from uh select star all the columns exclude this one the exclude keyword is, is specific to DuckDB. it won't work with other database for other database is not that convenient you need to select and then select for example country id you need to list out the names it's uh so that db has a shortcut basically exclude a simple column that again no this is not no it doesn't support this python right now this is sql so it doesn't support the pop uh statement so exclude geometry and then just telling that db is saying that okay that column uh is a geometry from kb so okay we know uh block stories so what we're doing is okay except the geometry column every column will get the same as it is and then for the geometry geometry column and to convert into uh geometry column that can be recognized so if you're doing this way right and then the same also you're going to rename the column as geometry rather than otherwise the name will be like this it's the same as the statement and then if you run this one right so it's done we already created the table now we can show the table here all right so you see the last column right now is the geometry compare to this column right because excluded by sequence coming from here all the way to the end and so this is where all the columns basically what we're doing here is the first six columns and then the last column is this one okay and then we rename that as the geometry and that's why you see the geometry in here also you see this is the data type the second row here shows you the data type so this is automatic it's going to depends on the data automatic figure out but the second one because this is the geometry uh, the reason why it's not geometry because you use use this function so this function we're going to create a geometry type and you will need the spatial extension otherwise this won't work okay so the reason that you can use this function because the spatial uh, extension makes sense so basically if you're reading vector data from somewhere and then it's a parquet file you need to do this but if it is a set file it, it is a uh, uh, geojson then you don't need to you will automatically recognize that the parquet file the reason for that is the right now DuckDB doesn't have native support for geo parquet so it's still kind of treating it as a csv but there's a column indicating it's the geometry and that's why right now we need to do it like this again uh, if you forget just come here copy the example and then change it so all we need is just this file okay and it can be the file on your local computer it can be a file um from the internet or s3 bucket if you want to do your local computer right i can just remove this one just to show you what it looks like right so because i have a city store packet here it should be the same if i run this one would that work yes or no Yes, right? Because they create a table, if it, but it doesn't, it's not doing anything because I already have the table. So the table already exists. It, it's not doing anything. If you want to override the table, you can say create all replace and then you don't need this way. So in this way, you automatically use the one. It will override uh, the table. Okay. Oops. Uh, create or replace the space here. Right, so we can either create or rep uh, replace. So this one is replaced, and then if you show the table, then it should be pretty good, right? Run this one, so nicely. So now because you can see what's in there, so the cities is a point, and then have uh, x and y, right? Longitude, latitude. So once you have the data table, now you can like you can convert into a variety of formats, and the first one actually is like this. So on a cone table. Okay, so uh, the first one actually called fetch all. That means you can turn this into Python object. Otherwise, con table is just basically just showing the table. But if you fetch all of them, you see here, right? It's basically a list. So you can, if you don't use uh, pandas data frame, you can just turn it into a list, right? So in here, we fetch all the objects and it turns into a list. So for example, how do I get into this one? Can I? Square zero and then zero, one, two, three, four, right? 
right so you can basically face all the results and then you can get to whatever you want but usually you don't want to like if this is only one or two lines it's fine but if you have a big table uh, the recommended way is to turn it into a data frame so nicely in here you see this also right the geometry here you know this is just a point but i mean it's being stored like that so if you turn it into a data frame it's no, not going to be recognized as a geometry anymore it's just some numbers but those are actually not latitude and longitude it's some real numbers so if you need that you need to export the data out or you can manipulate based on the original geometry uh, attribute but now see you get the data frame and then you can do the filtering right you can simply uh, if you want to um, select a certain row or you get some column you can do that as well but try to do everything within the database do not convert it to the data frame and then manipulate because the database can handle that right so simply for example here if you want to select uh, let's say all the names for example using a data frame can you do that so i'm going to turn into df maybe oops so you know what i'm talking about so i'm going to create this one as a data frame right and then save it as available right mm -hmm. so if there's a pandas data frame how do you get all the names My, I'm getting all the names of that column using pandas data frame. Anyone know? FDF square brackets name. Right, you get a whole column, and then you can also do dot uh, values. I think values to this or whatever. To this. Right. So in that way, you get the entire column, but. You can do the same thing using like the um uh see the what yeah you can do the same thing using DuckDB, right so con dot sql okay so if you need, just need the all the columns and you also need the um the values so how what, what do we do in here select name uh from it is right. oops where is it okay here right same thing so if you're just doing some selection doing some filtering doing some aggregation try to read using the DuckDB is more much more efficient than um others and then so i can just do fetch all Uh, but it's like it's in this you can you can also manipulate it because right now it's a python object so if you want you can just simply uh in here i can do a maybe a what's they call a list comprehension so i can do in here i can just do say um item one uh, zero and then for item in this square brackets and run it so now I get the same list if you want to try to do everything using DuckDB and then just export the data rather than uh, save it to available and then trying to manipulate it's not that efficient compared to doing the direct manipulation in there next uh, so we have talked about converting into Python object and also data frame next one is CSV so in here right we have all these columns uh, i want to turn this into a csv so copy cities dot um if you want to export something out it's copy table to something the output so in here if you look at this this one actually is uh i think it's optional so if you just want like copy something to, so because stackdb supports csv i mean uh, and JSON and Parquet very well, so you don't need to like have this one here. I can just simply run this without writing something like this. Okay, so let me remove this one just to show you. Uh, point. Okay, copy something to something. So this is copy the table. So this 
need to be a name of the table or it can be some statements select something from something or whatever some aggregation or any 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 sql statements at the end if it returns something you are copying the result to something else okay so right now if i run this one you see it's done maybe on the left you look at the csv you see that and you're going to show you the geometry and this is actually uh um this text is not all geometry it's not binary because it has already been converted uh into some uh, plain text all right so now you have this csv nicely you can open it but if you need more precise control about the data format or like the demeter then you can space it right here parentheses header so whether we want to have the header or not uh and then the demeter separate by comma something like that but these two are to be the same exactly the same uh there's no difference right, it's still the same table in here all right so csv is that you just want the, um, the table but if you have like complicated if there's a polygon probably it doesn't make sense to uh include it doesn't make sense to include the coordinates because your table is going to be very very long your csv so in here you can exclude it for example in here i copy something to something csv so how do i exclude the geometry column I just want the attribute. I don't want the. I don't want the. I don't want the last column here. The geometry. Can I do that? So how? So how do how how do I write? Copy something to something. So how what what should I be changing? What's the statement? Like I said, it needs to be a table or it needs to be some kind of statement, right? So what you can do, just forget about like how to do that. Just put a parenthesis in here, right? And within a parenthesis, you can do whatever you want, like just like you would traditionally do, right? And then here I can say select star exclude geometry, and then from cities, right? Make sense? And then I run it. Open this one again. Boom! It's gone. Right. so you can manipulate you can control what column you want to export okay so if there's something very weird some complicated one you can exclude it so copy again copy something from some copy a table or result to something and then after something you can have some options like parentheses and then header format or something like that so by default it's csv so you can just use the common csv similar in here copy select from cities where country equal to USA to this one, right? Again, just treat this one as something. Uh, it's a statement. So what we're doing here is that okay, we are only selecting countries for the US. And if you run this one, it's gonna join that cities to US. Right? You click. Now I have all the cities with countries within the USA. We have 114 cities in this table. Easy, right? So just like you tradition, like this is similar to in desktop GIS. You open the attribute table and then you select by attribute and then double click the country equal to and then double click and then select USA or whatever. And then you export that as a separate uh, CSV or, or vector data, whatever you want. Right now, it's just the CSV. But similar, you can do JSON. But if this right now, if you are doing vector data, it doesn't really make sense to export as a JSON, but you can if you want to. So the same thing, copy table to the name of the JSON file. So if you look at this one, it looks like this. So every every row, uh, it's one. So it's basically like a dictionary. JSON file is like a dictionary in here. So every row is a dictionary with the key, value, key, value, comma, key, value, something like that. So certainly if you want to be a JSON file, uh, you can do that and same thing you can select something from something where country usa and then also uh cities of json so this the csv and json file are supported by DuckDB without extension so if you already have the table in the in the database you can just export it without the space or extension next one here to excel 
this one does need a spatial extension because GDAO supports Excel, open Excel file. So without a spatial extension, this one won't work. Okay. So right now everything here, everything here remains the same, right? Copy, and this is the result. Select something, exclude geometry from cities, and then to cities dot excel. And this one is optional, the with keywords. Uh, you can remove it, it should work as well. But sometimes you, you can edit if you want to. So there's no no difference in here. The only thing is that you need to put this one, otherwise it won't work, okay? So make sure that you have the format GDAO. So basically telling that this is using the GDAO driver. So you can read and write Excel file and also using the disk driver here, this one. Again, if you don't if you forget that, you can always go to the DuckDB. So I can show you one more time here. Where does it come from? Documentation and then extensions. Spatial. Right. So these are some of the documentations. If you scroll all the way to the end, you should be able to see the format uh, in here. And also the short name, the long name. So that one is coming from here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see from here. Excel, right? So the old uppercase. So this is the name that's being used. Uh, you can also use the long name if you use the long name. But usually you can just use this one. So format and then single quotes. Excel. Or format uh, single quote whatever format you have here OSM uh, geo database SQL ESI or set file something like that so it's up to you uh, what you want to use right so if I again if I forget that let me remove this one just to show you whether it works or not right but remove it copy to this and then try to run it oh that means right now it's intelligent is there anything here why oh, it's empty let me open it this is not supposed to work if it works i would be amazed let me okay, downloads so 60 is still excel Oh, it does have data. Interesting. Okay. Is there anything? No, nothing. So it doesn't work. It already joined the file, but it's not. It, it's it cannot open. So something is wrong. Let me go back here. Do it one more time. So that's why I mentioned you need to make sure you put the extension so that you can use the spatial extension. Run this one again. Oops. Digital rival. Oh, because the file already exists. I think this is a bug. So if the file it already exists, you need to delete it. Otherwise, it we're going to show the error uh, error message. So let me run again. Nice. And hopefully this time I can open it. Nice. Right. So you can kind of like this is if you are working in GIS, you open the trap file and then oh I want to get the attribute table. I don't need the geometry. Then you can do it like this way, right? And can easily export to whatever data format. Nice thing about this, you can customize, you can do holding, so you can export kinds of files very easy, just with a couple of lines of call. Rather than you have to do that uh, manually. Uh, but of course, I, I excluded the geometry in here. Uh, if you don't exclude it, then it's going to include the geometry. I think it's just the point. So let me remove this one, just to show you uh, what it looks like. Again, I need to remove it. Otherwise, you're going to show you some weird error. Okay. And let me run this one again. Oh, it doesn't even work. Could not set geometry because it cannot recognize the type because Excel doesn't support that geometry type. It's only the string integer or something like that. So you do have to exclude it. Otherwise, it won't work. Yeah, it's already in there. So that's why it shows the error. It should just open right. I don't know why they do not. But... Okay, so that's for uh, Excel. Next one, uh, Parquet. So earlier we actually import the data, create the table based on the city's uh, Parquet file. Right now we are also exporting to Parquet. There's no point of doing that. But 
the point is that you can export other data format right so basically exporting if you have a table in a database then you can export it to whatever data format uh you like we don't care about where do you get the data we right now we're just talking about you already have the table i want to change it to other data format so here um same thing copy something to something and then talk park here i think this one is not needed uh, because like i said dark db supports csv json and parquet so if you have the five extension you should be able to figure it out so if i remove it i think it should work just fine you see and then you can load it back you can you can say select star from the parquet file right so this is the parquet i can just show you this here it's con dot sql right and then i can say uh from cities so okay and then i'm seeing a single course i need to double code in here okay, and and then double quotes okay right? so right now i'm using the parquet file that i exported so if i want it see same thing here so earlier we used this file to import into the database but i can also export it to a parquet file and then again if you export the parquet file if you read it again if you don't use the geometry by default it's going to show you as like binary blob storage so you don't you cannot recognize it so again go back to this uh the first line here how to read that back into the parquet file so what you want is like something like this okay and yeah that's pretty much it but you can also uh, um filter the data so the same thing here we're going to select something by usa uh, and then create a parquet file cities underscore uh, something like that so parquet file you don't need, again you don't need this one is to be able to figure it out but if it is something else something other than csv json or parquet then you have to parentheses Format GDAO, co a comma, and then driver, single quotes. It can be GeoJSON, it can be Azure Swift file, it can be Geo package, it can be um what else? Any data format that one of the fifty one supported or Excel for example, right? So all you need to do is to follow this convention. So how about this? To GeoJSON, copy cities to cities GeoJSON with this one. I mean, again, the keyword with is like optional. So if you don't like it, you don't have to type. But you do need the parentheses to tell it. I'm going to use the GDAO, uh extension, and the driver is GeoJSON. So if you write this one, uh, because used by another process, driver. Oh. So you do need that. Let me see here. Interesting. Uh, oh, cannot override existing file. So let me see if I remove this one. Oh, there's a temporary file here. Let me delete this one. I think when I tried before, that keyword is not required. Uh, delete it. Okay, so now I don't have the geotation, so let me run this one. You see, it works. So the which keyword is not required, but this one, this within the parentheses, this one is required. So make sure that you write this one. Form, format GDA, oh no, no, uh, format GDA, comma, driver, and then single quotes, whatever file extension. And so right now I have the geotation. So again, if you open it, so this is a geotation file that you can open using. Uh, desktop js so if you want to let me see if i have a uh, qgs here just to show you uh, of course we can also open using um um leaf map okay so my 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 qgs is broken so if you want i can do it in here we cover this uh, in, in next week uh, but if you want i can say leaf map okay and then i can create a map equal to gmap uh, no gmap leave map dot map okay and then map so i create an empty map bye bye uh 
Oh, the map is not showing. Hmm? Something weird. Huh. Anyway, I will try next one, I'll fix it. Sometimes some of the packages uh messed up, so never mind. Let me remove it. We do it next time. So here, like I said, you can copy the entire table, or you can do selection, or you can do aggregation, or you can do whatever you want. And think about at the end, it's just a data table, and then save the result of the data table. So similarly, we can select all the countries just uh with the USA. And then we can just export it so as a geosession as well. So see here right now we have much a much a smaller file. Okay. So geosession is just a plain text. It's pretty simple. Uh you don't need to uh you don't need desktop GIS to open it. You can just use in plain text. But the downside is that it's not indexed, it's not optimized. So if you have a large file, it's going to be very slow. So make sure that you don't Okay for small file. Don't export like gigabyte gigabyte of large geotation file. Next one, uh is with Swift file. And I commonly to run this one out because it doesn't work on my computer, uh on Linux, but this is Windows. Uh I suppose it should work. So Kobe cities, I already report to them, so they already fixed the issue. Uh but it's not released yet. It might I, I I'm not sure when they will release. So if you want if you, for example, if you run into any issues, you can ask the question. So I'm going to show you here, DuckDB uh, Spatial. And this here, under here. And yeah, I think there's one of the reported issue. I forgot where, uh, where it is. No, open on Windows. About which one? Let me see here. Linux or something. Yeah, somewhere there's a I report it. Watch out. Anyway, so uh, like I said, this is right now the special extension is still very initial version. Not all the stuff are, are supported yet, so you might run into some issue. But this one is specifically just for Linux. Uh, it should work here. So if I run this one. Oh. oh because i think the file is already i already have the file here so i need to remove it or let me change it to a new name so hopefully it works this one huh do you work on your computer do you work is it on your computer or on uh, google collect collect work for you no okay so this is right now i think this is issue on some computers or oh, access is denied in right file you work yours works windows okay. oh google collect okay interesting but i know this is it doesn't work on my computer on a linux it doesn't work on windows mac um uh, that's weird but I think it's somewhere here. I remember that I asked question set file. Press in the set file. Press when ingesting. Oh, it did. Okay, this is the one I asked. We saw. Yeah, there's something wrong with the basically with the extension. Um, forget about it right now. If it doesn't work, um, at least you can export to GeoSession and Geo Package. So Geo Package, uh, it's a I recommend this one. Uh, try not to use Swift file a whole lot um, because it has quite some limitations. This one has no limit. You can hit, you can export a very large file. So you can export this one. I might need to delete the file if I have that. Okay, it works just fine. So cities look GPKG again here. Format GDAO and then driver GPKG. Okay, uh, GPKG stands for Geo Package. So this is the short name here, the file extension. So if you come back to here, where's the GPKG? Uh, GPKG. 
okay here so you can either use this short name or you can use the long name so but usually just use the gpkg uh, or uppercase then you should be able to export the data to geo package format gtal blah 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 make sense All right so it's pretty simple you can export it to uh, any other data format so let me see here if it works for let's try out some other data format okay so csv uh we already tried it out uh it's reset by this one doesn't work on all computers yet and KML, for example, right? I've not tried it, so it might not work. Uh, let's give you a try. So let's export this one to uh, KML. Again, I'm just copy this one. And I'm going to KML. Maybe lowercase. Similarly, driver, KML. Sometimes you need some special driver. Okay. So this one doesn't work yet. uh prj create recommend unknown name yeah it's uh i think some of the extension is not fully functional if you run into anything you can report the issues uh they might fix it but don't expect it to be perfect uh it's likely some of the format will not work so here tiger gml Cato, excel oh they might make it something else how about this one right geo bar I'm gonna try this one. See if it works. It works. Right here. May or may not. I don't know. Okay, this one works. So, uh, this one is more like for the cloud. So some of the cloud data is also use this one. Yeah. Simple, right? Copy, whatever, to the file output file name. And then format digital drive comma driver that's it so it's the same uh structure and next i'm going to talk about um some of those for example late late at night uh let show you because so far we have been reading data some small data either locally or from the internet and for lab nine uh there are a couple examples uh asking you to download data from for example uh download data from the internet and then read the data import into the database and then you also can export the data out to different uh, format uh, uh geojson swap file so for the lab assignment if this uh the swap file format doesn't work you can just ignore it uh, that's why did i ask for the no yeah i think i intentionally skip the swap file the geojson uh parquet and also the geo package so i don't use the swap file in here because it may not work on your computer and the next one I want to point out is there are a lot of data right now. If you go to the, uh, if you click some of those. So this is the website I think I've mentioned in the previous lecture called uh, Source Cooperative. So this is basically a non-profit organization uh, hosting a lot of geospatial data. So uh, it's growing. And this is, I think, the future of distributing geospatial data. So you put the data in the cloud user don't have to download they can stream the data they can query the data and you will notice DuckDB is already there so if you click here right google open data set and then on the left side let's tap here browse if you click uh it is a pm tile geo parquet right so the parquet file is basically uh what we have been dealing with so we can use DuckDB to read the file uh if you want if you want to let me try the other one i think the other one has the Maybe over to browse. Yeah, this one has the DuckDB database. Okay, 144 gigabyte. You want to take some time to download. So you don't want you don't want to download 144 gigabyte. But it's the entire database, all the buildings that they reduced. But so you can look at some of these, right? So you can see here, for example, places, parquet, country, or I think they have some admin or whatever, right? So I can see here, click in. And I think this is just the country. So for example, I just open it here and then click. All right. So you notice this URL here. If you click it, it's supposed to be asking you to download the file to a computer. Right. But now I don't need to, right? If I if I, I'm interested in this file, I want to look at it, I want to see what's inside. 
even if you download to your computer, desktop GS cannot open it yet. But DuckDB can, so you can actually use DuckDB. So all you need to do is find any data, host it in there you like. Come here, right click, copy, and then it's simple, right? I'm just going to come here and just go to the end. I just read it. So I'm gonna just conda. Ah, uh, no conda. Okay, sorry, con dot sql, and then double quotes. Uh, simple. Just from single quotes. That's it. Now we are reading the data, but try to avoid if it's like uh huge. The data is huge. You need to figure out what column is inside, so you don't want to actually um load the data because it pull some of the data. Sometimes it's too big. It might take a while, but I hope this one is not too big. You see? So now I get access to the the data table and can create the table. Or you can do it like this way. So for the lab assignment, usually I would recommend because your SQL statement is going to become very long. So usually I would say URL, define available, URL equal to single quote, and then passing the net the, the variable name in here. And then from there, the SQL statement, you can use the F string. So F, okay. And then so from here, I can remove this. But you still need the single quote, okay. And then uh, curly brackets. And then the URL, so that becomes much more concise. And this should be the same result. Okay, so you can read the file and then from here. And after that, if you only, for example, if you already know, if you only know like the specific column, then in that way, you don't need the entire table. So what you can do is here, I can copy these ones. And then you say, select, okay, the column name from this table. So in that way, it's only putting a single column. So if your file is like 100 gigabyte, but you're only concerned about a couple columns, then this is so much easier. So you can just run it. Oops. Uh, select. Yes, I just type it here. Okay. So now we're only putting just what? Yeah, just one column. You see, it's much faster. So this file here, just like you can go to look at the file and see what you like. Ideally, if you need to select the get the geometry column so that you can, it's being treated um as geometry so that you can export to vector data otherwise you right now you're only doing it with like one column it doesn't really make sense so what you can do is select this one and then you can say uh if you want the geometry you can i forgot the name let me you need to get this one in so it used to be uh here if you go up to the example i can do this Okay, I need to just copy this line, something like this. <coughs> or I just do this. So ST, GOM, WKB, test. Uh, so it will be something like this. Okay. I bought if this name geometry or not. Okay, nice. So you see, now I have this column and all the geometry nicely. Uh, if you don't like the name, you can say S geometry. So in that way, the column name is much more uh, simplified. So now we have the column, the vector data. Essentially, you are reading the data from the cloud, and then you are processing that, and then you can do aggregation. After that, you can change, convert this one to whatever vector data for me you like, like GeoJSON, SwapFile, GeoPackage, something like that, right? And in the future, all the data will be deep, um, kind of a cloud. Native format will be deployed in most likely in parquet file. So if you already know, you know, okay, now I know how to read the file, how to export it. Otherwise, most people are like, what this is, what this file format is about. I've not heard about that. But this is so called columnar data storage. So basically, it's by column and also support querying the data on the fly without having to download the entire file. Because sometimes this file can be like many, many gigabytes. So I can maybe show you some other ones. Like so here, these are all pretty small. Let me see if you can find a huge one. Like some of those. How about this one? 833 megabyte. Okay. I know the name here, BR. So basically I'm gonna change this one. This is probably Brazil, like a country call. And this see how far is how 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 feasible it is, right? So from here, BR. Again, it's 4, 800 megabyte. 
and let's try it sometimes it might be a little bit slow but i it's supposed to be okay you see how long how long does it take it's probably you're still downloading the file right i'm already done i already get my result and i can export the data so it's pretty, I mean, neat because you're only reading, it's creating the data for that specific column. It doesn't download the entire file. Let's even maybe try something else. Like, you'll be amazed. You see, you can find something like, uh, I, I say maybe US. US probably is huge. I want to find something like Gigabyte. Come on. Yeah, you, you can. Yeah, you can. I think suppose uh, it's almost. That one is a database. You cannot. Re you oh. you need to download it. I'm if by park file you can. So let's see here. Is the US here? Two point gigabyte. Okay, let's give it a try. It might crash, but I suppose it can read. Okay, let's see how long does it take. Oops. Okay. You see how many seconds, right? And in the meantime, you can go, oh, 4.5 seconds. You see? 2.1 gigabyte. And let me, like, if you want, let me, like, download this one. Okay. Click here. And let's try to see how long it takes. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> four minutes, three minutes, right? Four seconds compared to four minutes. So now you see the advantage, right? So if you know how to deal with those data, you are way ahead of everyone. Now it's super efficient. So this is the point that I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture is that if you know how to use it, you're going to make your life so much easier because now you can handle gigabyte, gigabyte data, people pass, and it's get to a data from computer and they can manipulate, you can export, you can extract, you can aggregate. Yeah, good luck still downloading. I'm going to cancel it. It's going to take a while. But try it out and explore those data. You will amaze. You can do gigabyte, gigabyte data just within seconds. So it's like improve your efficiency. Um, I don't know how many times, right? Four seconds compared to four minutes is six, 60 times. Okay. So if you're dealing with large vector data, you need to learn how to use this and try to use the parquet file. If it's the set file and, and others, you need to download. But parquet file is supported query. You can put it on the URL and then you can in the future if you do some project, you can just save the file in packet and then make over the HTTP URL on GitHub. People can read the file, they don't have to download the entire file. So this is uh, very powerful. Okay, so that's over today. I will see you uh next week.